Here are the video solutions for NCFE Level 2 Functional Skills Maths and this is Section A which is the non-calculator section and this is from December 2019. So let's take a look at the first question. Okay, so which year had the greater difference between highest and lowest values? Remember difference means subtraction. So what I'm going to do is subtract the lowest from the highest and this is where people will probably go wrong. It's 20.3 take away minus 3.4 and a minus followed immediately by a minus becomes a plus. So 20.3 plus 3.4 is 23.3 plus 0.4, 23.7. Use a column method if you need to. And I'm going to do the same here for the 23.4 minus minus 0.2. And that's the same as plus 0.2, so 23.6. So the greater difference, well, 23.7 is greater than 23.6. So that will therefore be 2014. We need to write the percentage to two decimal places. The number is 8.21917.8082. So if we're rounding to two decimal places, we're interested in the value of the third decimal place. Everything beyond that we can completely ignore. This number here is greater than five, so the column to the left will move up one, so the one will become a two, so 8.22%. Okay, so for this question, I'm gonna use the formula, which is five lots of uh, degrees in Fahrenheit which is 95 take away 32 divided by 9 so first of all what is 95 take away 32 5 take away 2 is 3 9 minus 3 is 6 so it's 5 times 63 divided by 9 using bid mass we'll do the division first 63 divided by 9 is 7 so we've got 5 times 7 which is 35 degrees so the highest temperature recorded in Zach's town this year was 32.9 degrees and Zach writes the, temp uh, the headline, the temperature reaches 35 degrees. Well, we can see Zach has exaggerated there, so Zach is wrong. Okay, 1D, this is a, quite a fun question. So we know that the median is 17.5, so the value in the middle is 17.5. Now, when we've got an even number, to work out the median, what we do, we put them in order and we locate the one in the middle. And normally you do that by chopping off the one on the right, the one on the left, and work your way until you've got one in the middle. Now, when you're dealing with an even number, you will get two in the middle. So that's worth remembering. So what I'm gonna do first of all is, using these numbers here, I'm gonna write them in order. So I've got a 15, a 15, a 15, 16, 17, uh, two 19s, and a 20. Now, if the median is 17.5, so the median is 17.5, as I said, when we've got an even number, it's uh, the two in the middle. So we've, we, we're taking the, the mean of the two in the middle. Now, the only way we can get a 17.5 as the median is if we've got a 17 and an 18. So 15, 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19, 20. So these are the two in the middle that give me the median of 17.5. Now, to the left of 17.5, I've got one, two, three, four, five values, and on the right, I've got one, two, three, four values. So there is a missing value on the right-hand side. So first of all, I can chuck in one of the values is 80. Okay, there are two modes. So um, we can see that 15 appears three times, so we need another number to appear three times. Well, the only way we can do that is if we add in another 19. So 18 and 19, or 19 and 18, it shouldn't matter which way around. And there we have it. Okay, so um, E. Okay, so let's just take a look at this. It probably takes um, a good look before you really figure out what's going on here. So rain has been forecast on 70 plus 60, which is 130 occasions. And of those 130, they've got it right 70 times. So rain, successful rain prediction was 70 out of 130. For dry, it has been forecast 36 plus 16. 36 plus 16 is 46.52. And they got it right 16 times. So 16 times out of 52. So uh, which is the greater accuracy? So what I would do normally if I had access to a calculator is just turn these into percentages so I could work out what percentage of the time they predicted rain and what percentage they predicted dry and just compare the percentages. 
uh, but this is the non-calculator section. So what do we do? We've got two horrible looking fractions. Now, what we could do, um, well, we'll just play around with these fractions and see what happens. Now, 70 over 30, 130, we can simplify to seven over 13. So the only way I can compare these fractions is if I get the bottom numbers the same. Now, I know that seven over 13, that there's got to be a link between them. So actually dry, I can simplify that, that is eight over 26. And I know that 13 doubled is 26. So seven over 13 is the same as 14 over 26. So rain was su successfully predicted 14 out of 26 times, whereas dry was predicted successfully only eight times out of 26. So therefore uh, rain, because 14 over 26 is greater than eight over 26. So there is my final answer, it is um, rain. Sorry, what was the actual question? Was, yeah, rain will be fine, rain more likely. Okay, right, let's move on to the final question here. Okay, so the scattergram shows the relationship between forecast temperatures and actual temperatures, and the line represents the points at which the forecast and actual temperatures are the same. So we can see on the line we've got six, six, 13, 13. So what this means, this dot here, it was forecast to be eight degrees, but it turns out it was less than eight degrees. Um, in fact, we don't, we need to take a reading to see if it was less, if it's below the line, it was less than forecast. If it was above the line, it was greater than forecast. So for example, seven degrees predicted, seven point, I don't know, seven and a half ish degrees actual. Okay, so a forecast is recorded as accurate if the actual temperature is within two degrees. Okay, so, and Zach writes that the temperature forecast was accurate for less than 70%. So let's work out how many times was it accurate. Okay, so anything within two, um, within two degrees is accurate. So this one is accurate, this is accurate. So it was just about its distance from the line. So this one, it was, this one here was bang on. This one is more than two centimeters from the line, so not accurate. This one is more than two, not accurate. Accurate, accurate. Uh, this is one, two, three from the line, so not accurate. And that is more than two as well. So one, two, three, four, five out of the nine. Okay, so it was accurate five times out of nine. So is five out of nine less than than 70%. And um, there are a few ways we could do this. Uh, again, I would love to use a calculator and just turn 5 ninths into a percentage using a calculator, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare 5 over 9 to 70%, which is 70 over 100, which is the same as 7 over 10. Now, it's, um, the easiest way to compare fractions is when the numbers on the bottom are the same. So um, the lowest common multiple of nine and 10 is 90. So five out of nine is what out of 90? And seven out of 10 is what out of 90? Five over nine, well nine to a 90 is a times by 10. So I'll times the top by 10 as well to give me 50. To go from a 10 to a 90, I'm timesing by nine. So seven times nine is 63. So we can see that uh, 50 out of 90 is less than 63 out of 90. So therefore, um, 5 ninths is less than 70%. Um, so does that confirm or does that disprove what Zach said? Um, Zach writes that the temperature forecast was accurate for less than 70% of the time. Um, so yeah, Zach is, Zach is correct. And the reason why, um, well, we've proved it here, uh, 5 out of 9 is less than 70%. Okay, let's take a look at uh, 1G. So what we've got here is we we know that the country is um, 30 kilometers by 48 kilometers. And we've got um, a sheet of paper, which is 12 centimeters by 16 centimeters. So let's just look at comparing the 30 kilometers to the 12 centimeters. How many times bigger than um, 30 is 12? 
And the answer to that is, well, what is 30 divided by 12? And the answer is 2.5. To go from 16 to 48, um, we can do the same thing. 48 divided by 16, uh, for me, I just know that three 16s are 48. We are tripling the 16 to get to 48. So what that means is we could use, if we're just looking at the measurements on the left here, we could say we could use a scale where one centimeter is this equals 2.5 kilometers. And if we look at the 48 kilometers and the 16 centimeters, we could use um, a scale where one centimeter equals three kilometers. So which scale works? Uh, so we need to think carefully about this. We need to use the scale, which is the more conservative. Um, and that is the one where one centimeter covers a bigger kilometer distance. So therefore we need to use this one here where one centimeter is three kilometers. So that is our answer and I'll explain why in a moment. So the answer is one centimeter equals uh, three kilometers. Um, has that definitely, yes, there we go. So in the article, what distance in kilometers will one centimeter on the map represent? And the answer is three. Now the reason we can't use 2.5 centimeters is because if I was um, not, if I'm using 2.5 instead of three, well, we know that um, the real life distance is 48 kilometers. So if we're going um, from the centimeters to kilometers, we're multiplying by 2.5. But if we're going from kilometers to centimeters, we need to divide by 2.5. So 48 kilometers, if I divide that by 2.5, I get 19.2 uh, centimeters. So using a scale of where uh, one centimeter equals 2.5 kilometers, that would mean the paper would need to be 19.2 centimeters instead of 16, so it won't fit. So therefore we have to use the scale where one centimeter equals three kilometers. And that is the end of section A.